I think everyone is heartbroken and devastated when they see the loss of life in Ukraine and and on the Russian side too, right? As we will see here, the U.S. has a lot to do with what's happening in Ukraine, specifically the Obama-Biden administration. And Jim Rickards talks a lot about this as well. In you know, the reality is the seeds of what is happening there were sown back in 2014 when Obama Biden backed the bloody coup and installed a puppet government. And we will see why that was in this article. This is going to be a good one. Uh, I will leave the link in the description down below, but let's get into this one. Title is How Obama and Biden Installed Neo Nazis in Ukraine. That's not good. Today's war cannot be understood without first understanding the U.S. government's role in Ukraine's Maidan coup. If the American people knew the truth about how Obama and Biden helped neo-Nazi factions overthrow the election, excuse me, the elected government of Ukraine, they might not be so eager to start World War III. Today's crisis in Ukraine cannot be understood without first understanding the U.S. government's role in the Ukrainian Maidan coup. In 2013, Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych rejected an IMF loan and EU association agreement because he claimed the loan would hand over control of Ukraine's natural resources, resources and increase the cost of living for the Ukrainian people. And you know what? I will back that up because everywhere I have read about the IMF making a loan to a country— it is always about that. They they ultimately structure the loan in based on my research in such a way where they're going to get those resources. They're going to get the the collateral that they put up against the loan. So that does not surprise me in the least. And and I've seen that I've I've heard about it and I've seen about it, seen it in African countries. And I'm going to be diving into what happened in Libya with Muammar Gaddafi too. The hor horrific tragedy of that and the U.S. State Department under Hillary Clinton. Her role, our role, unfortunately, in that and the destabilization of Libya because of it. Bottom line, the IMF is up to no good all the time everywhere. Let's continue. In response, a highly organized Western-backed color revolution led by U.S. government officials was immediately deployed against Yukonovich. Of course, you know, the IMF says, OK, United States, they're not going to play ball make them play ball, right? Uh, U.S. organizations, let me see if I can get past this uh, this screen here. Oh, is it not going to let me go? Oh, continue reading. Here we go. There we go. Um, let's continue on here. So he, okay, U.S. organizations such as the National Endowment for Democracy, NED, an infamous CIA front, trained activist journalists, to utilize social media funded television stations supporting the protests and bust many protesters in from out of town. Does any of that sound familiar? The same kind of shit went down in 2020 and you know who is behind it. See, the thing about what's happening in the last three years is so many people are waking up. No more can organizations like the CIA and all the other alphabet agencies do their, you know, nefarious work under the cover of secrecy. It's all in the, in the open. Everyone knows about it now. NED recently deleted its records of funding projects in Ukraine, but the archived web pages can be found here. So that's good that we have them. Neo-Nazi groups escalate violence. When, what started as nonviolent, peaceful protests in Kiev's independent square, known as Maidan, quickly escalated into violent attacks against police and government officials with rocks, bats, metal bars, bulldozers, that's that's a new one, and Molotov cocktails. Western media outlets claimed that these protests were peaceful grassroots demonstrations. Of course they did, right? They're corrupt uh, and bought and paid for by the, you know, powers that be. They failed to mention the neo-Nazi elements who seized weapons, commandeered government buildings, and bloodied Ukraine streets in escalating violence. Of course they did, because that wouldn't really go with the narrative, would it? One example of, the, of this escalation is covered in the Oliver Stone documentary, Ukraine on Fire. On November 30th, 2013, the Ukrainian chief of staff associated closely with the U.S. State Department ordered the streets to be cleared of protesters for the erection of the annual Christmas tree. Okay. 
When the police arrived, they were met by a highly aggressive and well-organized faction of Ukraine's right sector who provoked the police into a violent reaction against peaceful protesters, which is all the Western corporate media reported on. <clears throat> Predictability. Predictably, this resulted in more unrest and violence, which was further fueled by U.S. Senator John McCain's support of the protest, right? You got to watch these senators. Really watch them. Really watch all government officials, right? Uh, always look and never take anything they say at face value. U.S. government officials back the coup. Senator John McCain, the ranking Republican on the Senate Armed Services Committee, went to Kiev to show solidarity with the protesters. McCain met with opposition leaders and appeared on stage in Maidan Square, where he stood shoulder to shoulder with Savoda leader, I'm not going to try that name, looks pretty crazy, when President Yanukovych was asked about relevant U.S. communications during the time, he replied, my highest level contact was Vice President Biden. We had frequent phone conversations, but the problem was that Mr. Biden said one thing, but they did different things in Ukraine. That makes sense. Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Newland was caught on leaked phone call on a leaked phone call planning Ukraine's new government. Of course, you know, the U.S. just has to get their hands in every country's business around the world, and it's getting really old. Where she can be heard saying, quote, I think Yats is the guy and discussing how to, quote, glue the thing. Newland mentioned Savoda's Sabotas as one of the leaders they were working with. The phone conversation revealed the highest ranking U.S. official who ostensibly represented the Obama administration in Ukraine and the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine clearly plotting a coup d'etat from within the U.S. embassy against a foreign country's duly elected president. See, that's the kind of shit that irks me to no end. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Less than one month after the audio leaked, Yatsenyuk became the next prime minister of Ukraine. Okay, so it worked. The Maidan massacre. On February 20th, unidentified snipers began firing into the crowd, killing people on both sides, although the U.S. immediately blamed the Yanukovych administration. Another leaked audio call, this time between the EU's foreign affairs chief and the Estonian foreign minister, revealed that they believed pro-U.S. forces had staged a false flag attack as a pretext to move Yanukovych and final to remove Yanukovych and finalize the coup. It doesn't surprise me, right? It doesn't surprise me at all. That's how that's how the U.S. plays uh, ball for sure. The Maidan massacre was the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. Armed mobs took over the Ukrainian government, leading to the start of the civil war in Donbass and the Russian annexation of Crimea, right? And that is that, you know, when we read these, we also have to correlate and comment on what we know elsewhere and what other people have said. Like I said, Jim Rickards, who talks extensively about what happened in Ukraine, that is, he concurs with this. He said, after that happened, Russian Russia took Crimea as a, as a, like, if you're going to do this, we're going to do that kind of a thing. And you know what? I don't blame them. I don't blame them. I always tell people if Russia were to get real cozy with Mexico, the U S would lose its shit period bar none. So what do you expect Russia to do if the U S gets real cozy with Ukraine? Well, it's happening and lives are being lost. And that is why I'm urging people to wake up, do your research, know what's up. This is not a game anymore. And and I, for one, am over it. I'm over the U.S.'s meddling in foreign countries' affair. It's getting real old. A lot of people are losing a lot of life. The newly formed government accepted a $15 billion IMF loan offer, which reportedly increased the price of natural gas by as much as 50% for the Ukrainian people. Of course it did, right? Like like we said, we know what happens when the, when you take an IMF loan. The Maidan massacre trail, trial and investigation produced overwhelming evidence that Maidan protesters were massacred by snipers at Maidan-controlled buildings rather than by government snipers who were nevertheless charged with the crime. Unbelievable. The evidence, which went unreported by the Western media, included videos, testimonies by over 100 wounded protesters, several dozen 
prosecution witnesses, and forensic ballistic and medical examinations by government experts. Ukraine's neo-Nazi Savota party and its founders, that guy and this other gentleman, played leading roles in escalating the violence in Maidan Square and went on to play leading roles in the newly formed government. Dang. It's, it's, it's difficult to read here, but we've got to educate ourselves. The Savota Party. The Savota Party traces its roots to the Ukrainian Partisan Party in World War II, which was allied with Nazi Germany. Until 2004, Savota was called the so- Social National Party, a deliberate reference to the Nazis' National Socialist Party. The leader of Savota has openly targeted Jews and ethnic Russians in Ukraine for many years. In 2004, he was kicked out of Viktor Yushchenko's government for a speech calling for Ukrainians to fight against a Muscovite Jewish mafia. In 2005, he wrote open letters demanding Ukraine do more to halt the criminal activities of organized Jewry. Quote, the BBC reported on the danger of Savota's rise in 2012. The European Parliament passed a resolution that same year condemning Savota as racist, anti-Semitic, and xenophobic. Yet somehow the U.S. government thought it was appropriate to back these neo-Nazi government groups pushing for the ethnic cleansing of Ukraine. And this is why you really have to look at the intentions of the U.S. government. Remember, the Obama-Biden administration did this. Why did they do that? Always ask why and peel back the layers. Every January 1st, tens of thousands of Savota followers march through the streets of Ukraine, holding torches to honor the birth of Stefan Bandera, the leader of the Ukrainian partisan forces who sided with Nazi Germany during the Second World War. Western historians say that Bandera's followers carried out massacres of Polish and Jewish civilians. When Yatsenyak became prime minister. He awarded Savota's role in the coup with three cabinet positions, including that gentleman and deputy prime minister and governorship of three of Ukraine's 25 provinces. Unbelievable. Savota's Andriv, Andriv Par- Paruvi was appointed chairman or speaker of parliament, a post he held for the next five years. You, you see, So the corruption probably just got a whole lot worse during that time. The Azov Battalion. Neo-Nazis also dominate Ukraine's Azov Battalion, which was founded by Andriy Andriy Bilecki, an avowed white supremacist who claimed that Ukraine's national purpose was to rid the country of Jews and other inferior races. It was the Azov Battalion that led the post-coup government's assault on the self-declared republics and retook the city of Mariupol from separatist forces. The Minsk II agreement in 2015 ended the worst fighting and set up a buffer zone around the breakaway republics, but a low-intensity civil war continued. An estimated 14,000 people have been killed since 2014, Congressman Ro Khanna and progressive members of Congress tried for several years to end U.S. military aid to the Azov Battalion. They finally did so in the fiscal year 2018 defense appropriation bill, but Azov reportedly received U.S. arms and training despite the ban. Unbelievable. You wonder who's running the government of the United States and what where their mind is. The Odessa Fire Massacre. On May 2nd, 2014, a gang of Ukrainian neo-Nazis brought into Odessa by an oligarch named Ihor Kolomovsky attacked a group of Russian-speaking Ukrainians who were peacefully occupying large tents outside the Odessa Trade Union House. The crowd escaped the violent mob by running into the Trade Union House, which the neo-Nazis Neo-Nazi mob subsequently lit on fire with Molotov cocktails, beatings and gunshots massacred innocent civilians, and those trapped inside were burned alive. Unbelievable. Ihar Kolomovsky, the Ukrainian billionaire oligarch who funded the Azov Battalion and other neo-Nazi militant groups, was not only the key man behind the Odessa Fire Massacre, but he was also the key man behind Burisma Holdings, right? There it is, Hunter Biden's lucrative cush job where he made those 83,000 the corrupt gas company which paid Hunter Biden 83,000 a month wow kolomovsky's 
Kolomovsky bankrolled many private Ukrainian militias like the Dinpro and Idar battalions and often deployed them to protect his financial interests in Privet Bank, the largest commercial bank in Ukraine. Wow, unbelievable. The Pandora Papers revealed that the current president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Lozinsky, is also financially entangled with Ihor Kolomovsky via offshore bank accounts. Kolomovsky, who owns one of the largest media conglomerates in Ukraine, One Plus One Media Group, also happened to produce the movies and television shows that lifted Zelensky into the national spotlight leading to his presidency. Remember that? He was in a show that was about some guy who ran for president, right? This is why you have to really be careful watching entertainment, quote unquote, entertainment and media, because a lot of it is predictive programming and a lot of it is just straight up CIA psychological warfare and mind control, quite frankly. Yeah, I don't watch it at all. I, I you know, I don't even want to take a chance because I don't know what they're putting into it. But let's continue. The nonprofit research group. Marco Polo, which is doing a comprehensive report on Hunter Biden's laptop, made the connection between Hunter Biden's text messages and Kolomovsky's neo-Nazi massacres in Ukraine. In the text messages pictured below, Hunter Biden asked Haley Biden, his brother's widow turned mistress, what his brother's widow turned mistress, if she believed that he had children burned alive in Donetsk, D Donetsk? or children killed in Donetsk, Ukraine, undoubtedly in reference to the Kolomovsky-funded neo-Nazi war crimes in eastern Ukraine. On February 24th, when Russian President Vladimir Putin sent troops into Ukrainian territory on a stated mission to demilitarize and denazify the country, the Western propaganda machine went into overdrive to cover up how Obama and Biden installed these neo-Nazis factions in Ukraine. You bet they did. That's why you never trust the mainstream media. They are super corrupt, my friend. You probably already know that. This wasn't the first time the corporate media and the U.S. political establishment covered up for what Obama Biden had done in Ukraine back in 2019. The political establishment impeached President Trump for asking questions about what corrupt American policymakers had been doing in Ukraine. Remember, remember that? You know, who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy now, right? How many Americans realize that the U.S. government aided neo-Nazi militias in overthrowing the democratically elected president of Ukraine in 2014? How many Americans realize that neo-Nazi militias in Ukraine have been shelling the Donbass region for the last eight years in violation of the Minsk agreements, killing thousands of innocent, innocent civilians? How many Americans know that Obama and Biden and trained Ukraine neo-Nazi Azov Battalion who are guilty of committing ISIS-style war crimes. Every modern American and NATO war has been a total disaster based on false premises, which has turned stable countries into hotbeds of chaos, corruption, and terrorism. U.S. government-backed regime change didn't work in the Middle East, and it has now directly resulted in this war between Russia and Ukraine. Support the innocent people of Ukraine and Russia, but do not support the corrupt governments that created this bloodshed. Do not support the globalist banking cartel, the military-industrial complex, and the Western propaganda machine. Amen to that whole paragraph. The same neoconservatives and neoliberals who spent the last few decades killing millions of innocent civilians in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, and Somalia are now trying to manipulate the American people into supporting a war in Ukraine against nuclear-armed Russia. The diplomatic solution might be as simple as demilitarization of Ukraine, stopping the shelling in the Donbass region, and signing a treaty promising Ukraine will never join NATO. See, that is exactly what Jim Rickard says. He said that the best case scenario is Ukraine becomes a bridge country, not a part of NATO, not a part of Russia, almost like a Switzerland type of country to create a barrier between the so-called East and West. And I think that's a great idea. Um, still, the American foreign policy elite and the useful idiots, and yes, they are useful idiots who support them, are currently lobbying for escalation. No fly zones in World War III. Pray for peace and diplomacy. Amen to that statement right there. Uh, let's see here. Disclaimer, I did not support the U.S. government's 2014 coup overthrowing democratically elected 
government of Ukraine, nor did I support Ukraine's shelling of Donbass for the last eight years, nor do I support Russia's current invasion of Ukraine. The neo-Nazi factions represent a small percentage of Ukraine, but a significant percentage that played a major role in the 2014 coup, the war in Donbass, and the ongoing war with Russia. This isn't a story of good versus evil. It is a story of corrupt governments ruthlessly fighting for competing self-interest while ordinary citizens suffer the consequences. What a fantastic article. That is just phenomenal. Okay, there you go. There you have it. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Get the word out about this. Share it on social media. I mean, you know, do what you can to wake people up and to expose the lies and deception and evil doers in our world so we can get past this and, and you know, have a better world, quite frankly. All right. Thanks very much. Until next time, I wish you all the best, health, wealth, and success. Bye-bye.